sitting here painting some baits and you know what I, I think i got an idea i i think i want to do something here what's happening fish and friends welcome to another episode one of my loyal subscribers mr philip cheek gave me the idea why don't you paint an okeechobee craw crankbait I've, I've never seen one in a crankbait they got them in all types of plastics you know craws creature baits how come there's not one in a, in a crankbait well you know what i think it's time to do i think we make a couple glitter craws the first one is going to go to philip cheek philip thank you for being a good supporter you're going to get the first crankbait the second one that i paint i don't ever see crankbaits in a june bug color june bug is one of my favorite soft plastic colors so we're going to paint two enough yapping uh and there's also going to be a giveaway at the end not only for you philip but for the second person so let's let's get checking out stuff all right let's get started here i've got a pack of do it crankbait blanks if you didn't know do it does have their own blanks uh these were a couple 2.5s i had left that uh, already have their bills taped. That's one nice thing about the do it blanks. They come pre-taped as opposed to the old ones where you have to put masking tape over them. Uh, it's a nice time saver. So I'm going to throw these in my helping hands here uh, and get them primered up. I'm going to use some regular old white bait blast from do it uh, and get this ready to go and always make sure you shake up your paint. Put a few drops in here, get ready to go and uh, test on paper or paper towel something before you shoot on. And then, uh, yeah, put in even strokes and get these all primered up. One done, two done. As I said, we're doing two different uh, types here. Now I'm going to use some bone color that I mixed up, which is white and some yellow. Again, always test it on something else. And I'm going to do the bottom of both of these blanks. Get both of these covered in this. I want something light. I don't want it to be completely white. I want it to be more of a natural color. Uh, and this bone color does a good job of that. Uh, again, just covering the bottom. Okay, next I'm gonna grab some brown. Now, if you see up top, it's green, the bottom is brown, but the up top is green. Those are the colors that make the brown, so I always wanna make sure you mix it up and uh, after it's shaken up, you see that. Now, I put a couple spots on the paper. I wanna be this kind of shadowy brown, not the dark brown, I wanna dip just a light brown shadow. So I'm gonna pull my uh, air gun back a little bit and do some light strokes over this, even strokes over the bait so there's not any clumping or anything like that. And that's what you're left with, a nice brown shadowy top to it. Uh, now I'm going to get my stencil ready. So as I said, we're going to do a couple glitter craws. I'm going to cut my stencil out of this kind of thick cardboard paper that I stole from my daughter's art book and uh, trace out my blanks. So I've got my 2.5 crank blank traced out here. You can see pretty thick lines. And I'm going to do just kind of a, a regular craw pattern here. Nothing too crazy. Uh, and I'm going to go darker with these little craw lines, the pieces of the shell, as we go up toward the head of it. So you can see the first one is just one line uh, and then a little bit thicker as we go up gradually. And that's what it's going to look like. And I want it to kind of line up with the bill there. Grab my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut these out. Now, as I'm cutting this, notice how I kind of rotate my X-Acto knife. I kind of turn it with my fingers uh, to get these cuts. It kind of helps me cut these round parts a little bit easier than going in straight lines. So just kind of rotate this between your finger and your thumb and cut these out. And I'm going to, like I said, kind of go gradually bigger as we go up. And this is going to be just what I call a, a shell stencil. So as you can see, I'm just cutting out the pieces of the shell that I'm going to use. So it's only going to leave this after I spray paint over it. Again, I'm going to try to get that to line up with the bill, and that's what we're uh, we're left with. So you can get crazy with these. I've got some where I you know, did kind of spiky deals to it. I've got two pieces where you can cut it in half, save both pieces, and use the top or the bottom, whichever you like. Uh, and I've got just regular kind of half stencils that kind of leave a shadow when you spray it on. But most importantly, make sure you wear a respirator and vent this stuff out. You don't want to breathe this stuff in. So I'm going to lay a paper towel down. These are some shop towels that I have because when I put my blank down, I don't want to scratch that paint on any sort of hard surface. You can see they're good and soft. Uh, I'm going to load up some of this black iridescent glitter paint you can see there. Again, always make sure you test this. You want to make sure your flow is good and everything before you actually spray it on your blank. I'm going to go in light coats to make sure this doesn't clump up or glob up or anything. Uh, and that's what we're going to have. We're going to have these little pieces of the shell, just those black uh, pieces on there. So I'm going to do that uh, on this side. You can see nice little straight lines from that stencil. Did it on both of those there. Uh, I think that turned out pretty clean. Always make sure you dry your stencil and your baits because the stencil is going to be pushed on the other side of your bait. And if you leave the stencil wet, uh, it can leave marks and stuff. So do the same thing uh, on the other side of the blanks. Now you can notice I wasn't exactly lined up right there on top. Some people do their top lines first on the craw and then line up the side lines with it. Uh, I'm just going to kind of fix this with the top lines when I do it. You can kind of see from the other angle there little messed up but that's okay we'll blend in i want to make uh this june bug one first so i'm going to go with blue and red blue and red make purple uh this is something i had to learn because i'm not really an artiste so I'll mix this up it wasn't quite the purple that i wanted so i added a little bit more red to it here uh, as you can see there and then mixed it up and that's kind of more the june bug purple that i wanted 
just kind of testing it on some paper to see what it's going to spray like. And to me, that's a pretty good June bug dark purple. So I'm going to spray in the lines here, and this is just one way to do it. I'm going to spray in and kind of trace the black lines of the cross shell. Now, you could have honestly done a, a top coat and a bottom coat of the colors that you wanted, and then the last step, put the black crawl lines like I have on here. There's multiple ways to do it. This is kind of a fun way to do it because I'm not going to take the purple all the way down to the black line. Notice I'm going to leave a little bit of that brown, that tan, uh, in between my black crawl line and my purple June bug that I'm doing here. So this is just kind of another way of doing it. There's all kinds of ways you can do this. Find your own way that you like, but I'm just going to keep shading this in. And I'm going to go a little bit darker in the middle and kind of fade that color out as I get closer to that black crawl line. As you can see, I'll do the same thing on the other side and just do different strokes. Make sure I've got my air on the whole time. I'm not going to blob it. Uh, good clean strokes and then kind of fill in as I go. Uh, I'm going to look from both sides. Uh, I did the front a little bit darker too. Look from both sides to make sure everything's even. That's always the hard part for me, making sure everything's symmetrical. Now on the second one, I'm going to load up some watermelon and some blue. So this is going to be my Okeechobee Craw. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom that I just did with the purple uh, on the top of the other one. I'm going to color in the blue on the bottom for this Okeechobee Craw all the way up to that black crawl line. I'm going to continue to uh, blend those colors up again, kind of darker on the bottom belly and then leave just a little tiniest gap uh, of that blue right where it connects up to that crawl line, just so it kind of looks like it's shadowy. So it looks like it's uh, two dimensional, three dimensional. I don't know. Load up my watermelon. Always make sure you test it. Make sure my lines and everything is running uh, nice. And I'm going to do the same thing with the green that I did with the purple. I'm going to Trace this in, get close to that black line, but leave just a tiny bit of space where it tapers off from the dark in the middle green uh, and kind of feathers out to a light green as I get closer toward that black edge. And just do that uh, all the way across every single one. And like I said, make sure you've got a consistent pressure so you've got a good consistent line. You don't want to be like flicking the trigger and, and spraying this all over. It's going to glob. So. Do this again, check both sides to make sure everything is symmetrical. And then I'm going to hit it with the heat gun to make sure everything is dry before I move on to the next step, which is a little bit of black. This is some black pearl. I'm going to drop into one of my mixing cups. This is what I use uh, to clear coat and some little dropper dipper ball things. I stole one of these from my daughter's art craft thing and uh, ended up buying some on Amazon. But I put some black on this, always dot it on the paper first in case I have too much. And then I'm going to put some black dots uh, across the shell of this, uh, you know, crawfish often have, you know, dots and stuff on their shell. So I did pretty, just a pretty simple one here, just kind of doing some dots uh, along those black crawl lines and then hit it with my uh, air gun to make sure it's dry. The second crawl, we're going to texture a little bit different. I'm going to use a stencil. I put some brown in here uh, and what I'm going to do, get this shaken up nice and well and draw little circles uh, in these little crawl shell pieces with this stencil. And you'll see what that do is it'll add a little bit of texture in there Give these little dots like you'll find on a cross shell you know it's not smooth they have little dots and now you can see on this uh, when i sprayed this i made a little bit of brown uh, on the blue i didn't want to get any brown any dots on the blue it should only be on the green so i took a paper towel i put a little bit of uh, airbrush cleaner in there and then wiped it because the bottom was already dry uh, i hit it with that air gun the hot air gun uh, i wiped that off you can see it got pretty much most of it off there you don't want to you know scrub too hard because you get the bottom color but Looks good. So I'm going to hit the other side again with just my stencil, do little round circles uh, and get that all textured in. The top craw mark, so the top of the shell, kind of where the shell would bend when the crawfish kind of rolls up. I'm going to take this and match up side to side. Like I said, I can kind of fix the sides that weren't even. Uh, round these uh, over and uh, connect those with the brown. To texture the top of it, uh, I'm going to flick the trigger. And with the same brown that I had in here, I'm going to flick it and it gives these little like splotchy blots speckles uh, that I'm going to do to the top of the, the craw here because as you'll notice when you look at a craw again they're not flat they've got little speckles impurities you know spots so it just gives it a different texture again putting different uh, you know textures and layering here the front of it I'm going to make just a little bit darker with some brown because I think this one can also imitate a bluegill we'll see that here in a second but uh, put that to the side to dry and then I'm going to finish the dots on the second uh, side of my June bug craw that's what it looks like uh, I'm digging that and I'm going to add some glitter. Like we said, this is a glitter craw. I've got some really small green glitter to uh, to make my June bug. So I'm going to grab uh, some eyes and put those on first. These are the perfect perch eyes I'm going to add to the uh, Okeechobee craw. 
because like I said, this can double as a, a bluegill imitation. Now you'll notice, uh, do it does it right. They give you two eyes, left side and right side on two different tabs you can see there. So the eyes are looking the same way. I love it. So you can see there, I've got the point of the eye forward like it would be on a fish. Uh, put both of those on and it looks sweet. I know crawfish don't have eyes, but uh, on this one, the June bug, I've got some black eyes that I just threw on there and then I'm gonna cut the, uh, the plastic off that was covering the bill. And that's what we're left with, looks pretty clean. So it's time to clear coat these. I use Bob Smith, any sort of two part epoxy, make sure it is 30 minute cure. Uh, five minute cure cures too quick. 30 minute is what I've got. Warm it up with my heat gun. It makes it flow a little bit easier. Uh, half and half equal quantities into my little uh, cup here. Mix that up nice and well, make sure it's good mixed. And then I'm gonna clear coat my bait. I wanna go with a real, real light coat on here. You don't wanna get too much and glob it up because it can really mess up your crankbait. So. A good light coat, especially on the top where I'm going to add glitter because the glitter part is going to be two steps. So super, super light coat on the top. After I've got that done, I'm going to add my glitter. I just use the back of my paint paintbrush. You don't need a ton of glitter. A little bit goes a long way. I'm going to get that all mixed up in the cup. Uh, I hit it with the heat gun just a little bit to make it a little bit thinner and then paint this on. Now, as I'm painting it on the blank, uh, again, I can't stress enough. You have to make sure it's a light coat. If you put a real thick coat of this stuff on, it'll glob. Um, if you don't have a, a lure turner, it'll like pool up in spots. So make sure it's a real light coat. I kept painting it on until it got a little bit sticky and make sure it was real thin uh, enough to cover the bait. But that uh, that glitter kind of incorporated real well. As you can see, they're a real thin coat, but I've got a nice amount of glitter up there. Not too much, just a nice kind of speckling of green glitter in there. Hit it with the heat gun to make sure everything's uniform. Make sure there's no blobs. It also gets rid of the bubbles. Put that to the side to dry on my lure turner. And then we can uh, coat the Okeechobee craw. Again, same thing. Real light coat uh, of this two-part epoxy. I'm going to leave the bottom really, really light coat. Uh, this one I'm going to use a little bit heavier flake. So this is the blue holographic. A little bit bigger, as you can see uh, when we open it up here. Bigger flake, but look at that. Oh, isn't that pretty? Throw some of that in. Again, a little bit goes a long way. Mix it up. Make sure it's nice and thin, like so. And paint it on. So you can see I'm kind of painting it on thick because I'm going to keep... Uh, kind of spreading this off the excess off and it kind of helps keep the glitter in there i'm sure there's a bunch of different ways to do this this is just kind of the way i'm doing it you can see it's a little bit too thick on there so i have to keep brushing it keep brushing it until it's a thin coat you can barely see the glitter on there a good thin coat uh hit that with the heat gun and we're done all right fisher friends and this is what the uh, the final product looked like i hope you like the voiceover thing it's so much easier to paint and just change camera angles and worry about that instead of trying to talk and paint and do stuff in focus so much easier and there's not background noise of the air compressor and the of the airbrush but comment below and let me know what you thought of the video and comment below because if you want to win the june bug crankbait this one right here the old tan june bug color my wife said the top looked like a dark blue I don't listen to her anyway. She doesn't even know what chartreuse is. Comment below if you want to win it because I'm giving that away and I'll throw in a few extras for you. So shout out to Do It. Thank you to the folks at Do It for believing in me, helping support me this year. Uh, let me be part of the, the paint process. There's some new paints coming on the way. I've been messing with them. If you follow me on Instagram, you might know what some of them are. But uh, some fun stuff coming down the pipe there. Some fun stuff coming in the blanks. New blanks. Do It. Specific blanks. Can't get them anywhere else but there. Uh, I am super excited. New eyes, all kinds of stuff on the horizon. But uh, thank you to Philip Cheek. Thank you to everybody else who continues to watch and support me. It means a ton. I wouldn't be here without all of you. So uh, thank you for watching. If you're new to the paint process, uh, leave me any sort of questions below. I am still learning myself. However, I will try to help you uh, in any way that I can. So thank you all so much for watching. And until next time.